Rolling. We are on the record at 9.05 a.m. This is the second day of Mr. Balwani's testimony. Uh, Mr. Balwani, do you understand that you're still under oath? I do. Uh, just for the sake of the record, would counsel under their appearances again? Yes. Jeff Cooper Smith from Davis Wright Tremaine, uh, representing Mr. Balwani. Uh, with me again are John McKay, Kelly Gorton, and Jim Topinka, also for, the, um, for Mr. Balwani. And Mr. Balwani, since we uh, adjourned your testimony yesterday evening to, to this morning, you haven't had any substantive conversations with the SEC staff, is that correct? That's correct. So when we, when we left off yesterday, we were talking about uh, Theranos' relationship with Walgreens, and I want to sort of continue on that topic at the mor this sure. morning, if that's okay. I'll hand you a document that's been previously marked as Exhibit 179. Okay. Uh, do you recognize Exhibit 179? I do. What is it? It's an email from uh, to myself and Zat Walgreens. Okay. And um, do you see the um, sentence that begins, two areas which must be focused on are patients per day with a four plus experience? Yes. And venous percentage in the 10% <coughs> range? Yes. Well, what, what is a four plus experience? Um, we used to have a um, uh, app. It was a survey app uh, where when the patients were leaving our store, uh, we would ask them, how was your experience? And we would give them the app. And on the app, they will tell us how things are going. So how they would get to rate the checkout and check-in process, the finger stick process, finding the location process on a scale from one to five. And uh, uh, so this, this was an iPad app. And we had, I think, uh, tens of thousands of people who use the app and rated our service. And uh, so that's what it was. <coughs> was your understanding here that what he's telling you is that, um, the, 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 that the companies need to focus on improving the patient experience and the venous drop percentage? That's what he's saying here. And uh, did, did you understand the next line down? It says, we need to have a documented, detailed plan on both, or it will be difficult for me to convince expansion beyond AZ. Do you see that? I see that. Uh, did, did, in, in August 2014, did it communicate to you that it would be challenging to expand Theranos services beyond Arizona? No, he did not. It was also not called. Uh, did, did he ever ex express concerns about convincing his more senior management to expand beyond Arizona? Well, this is what he's saying in this email, but like I said, if there were any concerns be, uh, about expanding beyond Arizona, they would have uh, been discussed at my level with his senior executive. So the CFO at that time, CEO at that time, uh, and a lot of other people. More importantly, this is also at the same time, d at uh, maybe a day or two before or after the document that we got from uh, Walgreens that you showed me yesterday, that showed, you know, plan for 500 has to be revised to 2,000 or whatever stores. So uh, he, he, he's, I don't know what he means by that, but this was not his call whether the Walgreens is gonna expand beyond 40 stores or not. Did, did he ever, in, the, in, the, in August or um, September or October of 2014, did he ever provide you with um, the impression that Walgreens was not going to roll out to additional stores beyond the 41 um, that, that, that were currently open? No. Uh, let me actually give you more information there. Uh, in month of September of 2014, uh, Walgreens' world shifted very significantly. Uh, in I think it was September or October. In that time frame, Walgreens discovered a 1.1 billion accounting error. And uh, the entire company went uh, in a panic mode. Um, they, at that, in October, we had conversations where he said, look, uh, every project is being reevaluated because we need to dig ourselves out of this billion dollar error. We need to save cost. I won't even be able to travel for our meetings anymore. We do, do, need to do travels on tele video conferencing. So in October, things changed. In October, we started talking about, look, if you are not going to build out the gold stores, Theranos can do it in good faith. And we started negotiating with them, started the process of saying, look, we can take over a lot more responsibility uh, that you originally had anticipated you will be doing, but we need to modify the terms of the contract. 
So that conversation started in October, uh, but it was not in August. Okay. And, so, so that, and is that the conversation that ultimately led to the discussion of a rental model in the Walgreens? Correct. Uh, and when in October do you think that began? I don't remember the exact date, but I think it was uh, around early or mid-October. Uh, but I believe that in November, again, we met with the Walgreens executives. I explained to them that, look, we can take over more responsibility. Uh, that's not a problem. We just want to grow faster. And they said, uh, we love that idea. Uh, they didn't want to spend money uh, on build-outs. And then I think in early December, uh, uh, either the Walgreens executive visited us, uh, or maybe around November, I got an email from his boss, the senior executive, who were the decision decision makers, not that they had spoken with, and he may have also said that he also spoke with. So he sent me an email saying, "I've discussed this model, great model. We, sh we should move forward on that." And, and I guess w what would the you uh, said this? Um, remind me of the time frame you were just discussing for that. Email. Yeah, October was when uh, after the accounting error was dis uh, discovered. Uh, he said, we won't be able to make investments, but we love this business. We want to grow with you, uh, but we won't be able to make the kind of investments that we had anticipated we will do because of this accounting error. So I said, that's okay. We can take more responsibility. We will have to change the economics, of course. But uh, And they said, you know, we want your service in our stores. We love your service in our stores. As a matter of fact, so, so that was October, sorry, to, to answer your question. And, and then uh, 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 you had a meeting with, uh, with the senior executives, you said, in, in, in November? I, I think it was in November, uh, and I believe in early December, their top brass has visit, had visited us. I may be off by a month or so, but about that time frame. I'm just trying to get your best memory. Yeah. Uh, the, um, so this move to the rental model, was that, was that something that was going to, that, that would require more upfront cost from Theranos, is that right? Well, we were negotiating that. Uh, it, it may have uh, uh, required uh, some upfront cost, but it could have also been because we were going to pay rent to Walgreens. One of the points that we were discussing was Walgreens was still going to build it out, but we would include that in the rent, and we were going to lease the space for eight or ten years. So that part was not dis confirmed and decided. We were still negotiating that piece. Okay. And w w was the rental model, were the discussions around the, that uh, rental model also going to include a change in the per patient fee? Given to Walgreens, yes. Uh, what, would, what, would, what would the change be? You know, I think it was either $4 uh, per patient or $6 per patient. I don't remember the exact number. Uh, either it was $6 per square foot rent and $4 per patient, or it was $4 square per square foot, $6. But it was some combination of those two. So we were going to give them um, a lease, like a landlord. But then there were still some services the Walgreens technicians, Walgreens staff still needed to provide. And, and that four dollars or six dollars was the fair market value of those services. So, was your understanding that the Theranos uh, didn't roll out to more than forty-one Walgreens stores because of this shift in management at Walgreens? It, it was. It was. I think it was a sl at that time we thought it was a slowdown because yes, there was a monumental shift happening at Walgreens, uh, but. Uh, and we also quite honestly thought this was a great opportunity to negotiate the contract uh, because if we had more control over our spaces, we can maintain our branding. One of the things that we were unhappy about was the patient experience, and this gave us the best of the both worlds. We will still be in Walgreens. We will still be able to take advantage of all the reasons why we went to Walgreens, but now we have our own space, our own brand, our own patient experience. Uh, so it, it was a good trade-off for us. There was a conversation with Mr. Yes. I think that email came to me from, or it may have been from, uh, sorry, uh, yeah. his name is, so it may have been one of those two people, but I think the email was uh, November or December of 2014. I'm pretty sure it was those months, uh, or, or Q3, Q4 of 2014. Uh, and so, so throughout this time period, while, you know, while you're discussing the Walgreens relationship with um, Senior executives with, with more of the operational folks. Were, were you also keeping track of the the Venus draw percentages that uh, that Theranos and Walgreens were discussing? Uh, I must have been. I mean, that was one of the regular things that I would I would track. Yes. And, 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 and do you recall Theranos improving significantly in terms of the percentage of offering in finger stick versus Venus in that time frame? You mean the tests or the visits, or either? Uh, well, for for for, yeah. for for the patients. Yeah. So. 
No, I don't think the number of percentages in f for finger stick improved significantly, or may, it may even have gone down. <clears throat> but like I said yesterday, that at that point, once we knew we were taking over as the landlord, our focus on chasing an arrangement that we knew we were replacing got downgraded, which would have been add more finger sticks to our menu. Because we had learned now that finger stick is a great differentiator, and it was still our future, so we were not uh, shying away from it. But other things were more important at that point. For example, if we were going to work with Walgreens in this new capacity, there was this new workload, a new project that was going to be on our shoulder, which is construction, and planning about the stores and finding locations and so on and so forth. So there was more work coming our way. So yes, I was still tracking finger sticks, but uh, that equation was changing, uh, relationship was changing with Walgreens. And would all of that, you know, the construction that you were just mentioning and um, try being able to roll out, um, would that have slowed down the pace then of Theranos' rollout in, of services in Walgreens stores? You know, it, in the short term, it may have Im had impacted. Uh, I don't know. When we met with the Walgreens executives, uh, I think in December and again in January, uh, it, it, this was a very important project for them. They didn't want to lose it because they were the reason we met with them and they all came, except for came, came, came to discuss uh, this arrangement. And they made a commitment saying, look, don't think of this as our disinterest in what you guys are doing. We still love what you're doing. Uh, and we still want that exclusivity. We still don't want you to go to CVS. It's just that we cannot make those commit commitments in construction. So your idea, you spending that money, we love that idea. Um, so we are fully committed, and we will get the contract done within 30 days. So, yes, there was a risk that it may have had slowed things down, and unfortunately, obviously, in reality, it did. But you know, it was not. Uh, it may have been in the short term, but I think I thought in the long term we would have more control over how fast we can grow, longer term. And this meeting that took place <coughs> was that in December of 2014. Um, I think it was December of 2014 or early January of 2015. I remember it was uh, in cold weather uh, for Bay Area. And uh, it was around Christmas time. So it may have been, uh, the reason I remember it uh, being that around that time was because this was really important for them and for these guys in their peak holiday season, uh, which is busy season for Walgreens, for all five to find time at the same time or six to come visit us uh, in Palo Alto instead of asking us to come was a big gesture, big, big deal. Actually, if I may add a few more things, it was, um, that even uh, all the way through summer of 2015, even now things were absolutely slowing down, uh, the overall long-term plan with Walgreens was still not changing. It's maybe a part evidence of that was two of the participants uh, who were in that meeting, uh, who were actually my counterparts at Walgreens, had spoken to me about joining Theranos uh, and to work for me directly. And they had offered to come and help me build the operations organization, uh, and scale this business as we scale with Walgreens and other retailers, uh, and actually sent me a long email with this resume attached. Uh, so they've wanted to come work for me and be the point pe people rolling this project out. The, so, I guess in, in, in October 2014, did you have any? Did you have an expectation that Walgreens was going to open any more stores uh, within the year? I had strong. Uh, 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 um, um, uh, understanding that this absolutely they will. It will slow down. We were modifying the arrangements, but I had absolutely no reason to believe that the overall project is not going to get rolled out. Now, my, my, my question specifically to did you think in October of 2014 that, that Walgreens was going to open more Theranos wellness centers that, in 2014? I, I don't remember. Uh, our expectation was in, in actually, I, I actually think in, we were planning to, we had given them a list of additional stores we want to open. But like I said, in September, their world changed. To, so I don't remember if they, uh, if that list went to them, uh, in, if we emailed them what stores we wanted. I actually think we did. We had a conversation with them. We gave them a list of stores that we wanted to open, and we were talking about those stores. But no, I did not get an inclination from them that they were not going to open any stores. I guess, uh, how, how would the process work when, when Walgreens uh, would open up their house location? I mean, so, so you know, so you went from 11 to 41, right? right. Uh, how, how, how would, how would Theranos be informed about potential stores and how would, uh, how would the site selection process work in that time frame? Well, the first 40 stores Walgreens picked, uh, I, like, as I shared with you yesterday, 
Uh, but we wanted to make sure the next that doesn't happen with the next set of stores. <clears throat> so we, uh, based on the data that we had and the based in the da based on the data that we got from Walgreens, I shared with you the spreadsheet they sent us. I forgot what time frame, but we had enough data from Walgreens that told us which stores in Arizona are good. So our team started compiling the stores that we thought we wanted to be in. Uh, there were some contracts with Medicaid we were going to lose if we did not have statewide coverage. So I believe we actually picked stores that we wanted to be in in uh, um, Tucson, Flagstaff, and a few other places in Arizona so we can have the statewide footprint so we can bid for Medicaid. So it may have been, I actually don't remember exactly, but I would say it may have been that we took over a more aggressive approach on what the next stores we wanted uh, to be. Did, did Walgreens ever, in, in October 2014, did anyone at Walgreens express an affirmative commitment that they would open additional Theranos stores in 2014? It, I mean, I, I don't think anybody said ex explicitly, but my understanding was because we had a contract in place and our deal was that we are growing nationally, then yes, my expectation was they will grow. Nobody explicitly told me, yes, in the month of November we're opening five, or in the month of December we're opening five. That month by month plan we had not laid out, but my expectation was we will continue to grow and we're going to continue to grow nationally. Okay. So, uh, just, <coughs> so just so I understand your, your answer there, uh, no one at Walgreens explicitly told you that the specific stores would be rolled out. Uh, uh, let me rephrase that. In October 2014, no one, uh, no one from Walgreens gave you sort of a month by month rollout plan for the rest of the year. Is that fair? That's correct. Oh, that's my recollection. When was the last store opened uh, out of the 41 stores? I think it was end of August. End of August 2014? Yes. Would uh, September 2014, would that surprise you if that was when the 41st store was Yeah, opened? it's possible. I may be off Something by a week like or two. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to hand you a document that's been previously marked as Exhibit 221. Sorry, it's large. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to ask you to review this entire document, Mr. Balwani, but I'll just represent to you that Exhibit 221 is a document that represents um, text messages between or messages between yourself and Ms. Holmes, mm -hmm. uh, produced by Theranos uh, from her uh, from her Theranos issue. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yes, sorry, it, it, no, didn't mean to say. Mm -hmm. and, and if you turn to the page ending in uh, 103. 6392. Okay, I have it. Uh, you, you, I mean, just to, I mean, do you understand the general format of what this spreadsheet represents? It's got a date and time, the content of the message from the, the recipients, and to from information. Yes, I see that. Uh, if, if you look at about the fifth line down, you see uh, an SMS message from uh, sunnyballwaniac.com to Elizabeth Holmes uh, saying, we can't scale with WAG. Page 392? Uh, 292. Oh, sorry. No, three. See that? Uh, and you see, it's dated November nineteenth, two thousand fourteen. I do. And, and did, did you send Miss Holmes this message? Yes, it's my my email address. Um, and it, you go on to say they are terrible, and we need uh, SWY and CVS. Is that right? Yes, that's safe and CVS. Um, and if you look a little further down, um, there's a message from you, uh, timestamped five oh nine five fifty seven. I see that. That says <coughs> they told. Uh, they told, I guess it looks like our team in WAG meeting, that they don't intend to open more PSCs until July because we missed their IT integration deadline. I see that. Do you recall that uh, meeting? I don't recall that meeting, but it seems like that's my text message. Uh, did you have a belief in, in November 2014 that, that Walgreens wasn't going to uh, expand until July? No, I did not. Why not? Uh, first of all, uh, there are many reasons here. First of all, this one points to a uh, a team meeting uh, where some IT guy said they cannot do IT integration. Uh, Walgreens IT, uh, in my opinion, was like dealing with Soviet Union. If it didn't, if something didn't make part of their five-year plans, you had to wait for next five years to, for that to happen. 
So just because somebody from uh, IT said something is not possible, I had dealt with Walgreens IT for since 2010. They couldn't even install a printer, but we still were managed, able to launch. When we launched uh, in the 41 Walgreens stores, they couldn't give us internet connectivity, and we put our own DSL routers in Walgreens stores. So because somebody from IT saying something cannot be done from Walgreens IT literally meant absolutely nothing. Okay, why did you say we can't scale with WAG? Because um, I had a lot of frustrations with WAG that I used to communicate to WAG all the time. I mean, in my meetings, I sent a long email in 2015 to the CEOs, uh, their president and others. So uh, their quality was not good because we were constantly fighting a battle in uh, making sure that people get trained. So I had frustrations with Walgreens, and uh, this is what, what I was expressing in this text message. I guess, how did your frustrations relate to Theranos' ability to scale? I don't think we had issues of, uh, and on our side uh, on an ability to scale. We could have scaled to more stores. But, I, I mean, it look, it, you know, to, to me it looks like you're telling, uh, uh, this message could, could be read to say that you don't believe that you can scale with Walgreens. Is that is that a fair reading of that? No, I mean, this is a text message. If an important business decision like that was going to be communicated to the company and the board, I would have taken a more formal approach. This is just me expressing my frustration after probably having interface with Walgreens IT guys, which I really didn't like uh, uh, interfacing with. So if you didn't believe that they actually didn't want to scale with you guys and wouldn't be open, opening any more patient service centers until July, why did you even write this to Elizabeth? No, I was informing her that somebody from Walgreens IT made the stupid comment of our team. Now, it demoralizes our team. So it was worth sharing with uh, Elizabeth so that if she interfaced with Walgreens, she could remember this data point so she can talk to them about it. So it was worth sharing our frustrations. And I often used to bubble my frustrations with Walgreens to Elizabeth because she used to talk to us. She would to say, they would ask her how things are going. And she would tell them, you know, we need better chairs. Our check-in process is not good. So there are other things we were communicating. I mean, this was, uh, you know, a, a big change for these guys to work with an independent company like us. So we always had frustrations with them. So earlier you said that you didn't recall this meeting. Are you recalling that meeting now? No, no, I don't recall. I, I don't think I even attended this meeting. What I'm saying is, in general, with IT guys at, at Walgreens, what they said, something can or cannot be done, I ignored it. OK, but do you remember somebody telling you from Walgreens that they would not be opening any more patient service centers until no. July? No. OK, so you don't remember this text message at all? No, I don't. I'm just reading it out and saying, like I said when I started out, that my um, assumptions or my, my uh, experience with Walgreens technicians was that uh, the IT guys was, if they said something, I basically ignored it. I guess if you're ignoring it, why, do you, why are you raising it? To because it's, like I said, it is important for her to know what are our frustrations in the field. We were a small company. This was not IBM, where I cannot share this with, uh, and this was an important partnership. Anytime she spoke with Walgreens and others, which she used to, I wanted her to have this data, so that if they say, can you do this for us, she could ask, saying, can you please ask her IT to move faster? And that happened all the time. So this was not the only instance when I said, hey, you know what? The bathroom space that Walgreens had promised us is terrible. So the next time when you talk to them, can you mention that to them? So this is a routine thing, and she it used to escalate these things too often. So I mean, just, just, so, just so I'm clear, it, it, your best recollection is that the statement here, we can't scale with WAG, doesn't mean that in your mind um, Theranos was going to have, was going to have difficulties scaling with WAG? Not at all. Not even remotely. Not even close. So if you don't remember this meeting that these messengers are talking about, how do you know that it was an IT person that told you this? I think it says here, right here, the IT integration deadline. Uh, where does it say that an IT person told you that? Well, some IT guys or somebody on behalf of IT would say that. But typically, the corporate guys are not going to be able to make a commitment or, or a comment on behalf of IT. Uh, but I, like I said, also I dealt with Walgreens IT since 2010. And I mean, I knew people in Walgreens IT. I knew their systems, what code they wrote. And like I said, literally getting to even install a printer in their stores was going to be part of the next five-year phase. So you're guessing that it's an IT person who made that comment to you at a meeting? Yeah, but I'm, I'm confident this is a good guess, that either it's an IT, IT person or a corporate person speaking on behalf of IT, which would happen. 
If you, you, you turn to the page ending in 6354. See the message uh, chain starting at uh, on April 9th, 2015, uh, from you to Ms. Holmes. Uh, if contract terms and we don't have 1,000 stores, what happens to 50M remaining innovation payment? Do you see that? Where are you? At the top of 6354, about the. Yeah, yes, I do. Uh, wh wh what are you asking there? Do you, do you remember having this, this exchange with Ms. Holmes? No, I don't. But I can read it and see if I can recall something or understand something. Sure. Why don't, why don't you just read this page and then we can go through it. So going back to the, my initial question, uh, that line, if contract terms and we don't have 1,000 stores, what happens to 50M remaining innovation payment? What are you asking Ms. Holmes there? I think I'm discussing with her uh, the, uh, something about the, uh, we were negotiating the contract back and forth with Wal Walgreens at this point. So it's probably something um, from that that I'm discussing with her. I don't recall exactly what was the context here. Uh, <coughs> Yesterday we were talking about, we talked at some length about the, the innovation payment, is that right? Correct. And, and, you, and you recall generally saying that it, it was your general view subject to some minor exceptions that the innovation payment was, um, was Theranos' to keep. That's right. Um, wh what are you referring to when you're talking about the 50 million uh, remaining innovation payment there? Right. So we were, uh, at this point, trying to incent Walgreens to build out faster. And this is, again, notice this is April of 2015. So we were trying to incent <coughs> Walgreens to build out faster. As a matter of fact, we put incentives for Walgreens to move faster at this point in our draft contract. And as part of that, and this is the discussion that I referred to earlier, which is who's going to pay for the construction? So we had the $100 million that we thought, or 50, I forgot what was the budget, but we said we can invest that in construction or have Walgreens invest that in construction and, and uh, use that money towards growing within Walgreens. So sorry, this is a discussion around using part of the innovation payment for the purpose yeah, of... Yeah, was, that was ours, that we were going to either invest directly in the stores constructing them, or we will provide this as a sweetener, some money of that, to Walgreens to move faster, build all the stores, and if hit the certain milestones, then we will give them cash incentives. Uh, because what does that have to do with contract terms? Th because we were negotiating the contract. It, term, it terms, I mean, you, you think that means to the terms of the contract uh, and not termination? I think it means the con if the contract terminates. Okay. Right. So I, I, I guess what, what, is, what does the issue of termination have to do with building out more stores? I mean, I don't recall. I'll have to read the contract to see what terms were we were discussing. Uh, I mean, if I had the draft, I would be able to probably recall. You, you see Ms. Holmes responds to you at, uh, at 205440, scale now if need. Yeah. And you respond, so force, build 1,000 stores. I don't think that's intelligent. Yes. What did you understand her to be suggesting? Scale now means, uh, and I'm guessing here, again, if I see the contract, I'll be able to lot, fill a lot more gaps, uh, but I don't remember that. Um, and this is back and forth that I was doing with Walgreens, uh, was that build 8,000 stores ASAP right now and give them incentive to do that. If you look a little further down the chain, <coughs> it looks at at at, at 2115 it's at 17 seconds. You say, uh, looks like you say to her, "I will say we keep 25 no matter what." Do you see that? Yes. W w what are you suggesting there? 
I mean, are you talking about keeping $25 million of the innovation payment, no matter what? Uh, I, I, like I said, if I should see the contract, I'll be able to tell, but it's hard to guess what I meant here. I guess you, you were familiar with the, with the innovation payment at this point in time. Of course, right? yes. And you, you, you previously testified that by, um, at the time Walgreens paid that innovation fee, it was your understanding that Theranos would get to keep it. Absolutely. It's, it's also, like I said, documented in the contract pretty well. So I'm trying to understand what about the innovation payment you're, you're negotiating we had, here in 2015? We were not negotiating innovation payment. We were using this term internally between us, how to use uh, money to incent Walgreens. We were just using this term to define, uh, you know, either 50 or 60. We, we had decided that the money that we got from Walgreens, we will invest in the build out. And this is what the discussion was with the Walgreens also when the executive visited us. We said, look, we will pay for the build out. And we had the money. And so th we are using that as a, as a reference point probably at this point. But again, if I see the contract, I'll be able to uh, see if this language, I, I doubt we used this language in the contract. I'm pretty sure we didn't. If, if you look at the, your message at 21.15.44, but if natural terms, then we return 25. Do you see that? Yes. I guess in, in that contract negotiation, you're, you're discussing what, what, would, what would be returned to Walgreens? I, I, like, I don't remember. If I see the contract, I'll be able to. I'm sure you have a draft of that. I can see. What about the contract will refresh your recollection about this exchange? It will show me what we were negotiating with Walgreens. And what were we referring to? Which payments? What 25? I, I guess, is it, what, what payment would there be to return to Walgreens at, at this point in time? It would probably be in the contract in the draft. If, if I see this, I'll refresh my memory. I'll be able to give you a better answer. But I don't know what we were negotiating at Walgreens. What were the specifics? So you think there was a payment other than the innovation fee payment that you're talking about returning to Walgreens? No, I didn't say that. Uh, it, 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 we, in, this is 2015. The contract that I'm, we were referring to uh, uh, with the, from, uh, about the innovation payment was 2012 and the, two, the amendment in 2013. That was clear the innovation payment was ours, was ours. Now we are talking about renegotiating the contract and see if we can incent them to build out more stores on a, at the way we wanted to. And we were open to using you know, 50 million, 60 million, 100 million or more if it took to be able to build out stores and accelerate the expansion the way we wanted. Now, we may be labeling, again, I see the contract, I can probably tell you what we were talking about, but we may be thinking in our heads that, look, we have this $100 million, we can use that for construction, or for other purposes to build our business. So if I see the contract, I'll be able to give you more details. Uh, but I guess, to, to the best of your memory, this re returning 25 doesn't refer to returning $25 million of the innovation payment? I. I there's no other money that we had from Walgreens. The innovation payment was ours to keep. We may be using this term internally to describe a concept that we are investing something in 25 million in Walgreens, so it may be returning that. But again, if I see the contract, I'll be able to respond more accurately. But at this point, even here, I had no doubt in my mind that the $100 million innovation payment was ours per the contract. Now, at some point in time, did Theranos stop using its nanotainers um, in its retail offering through Walgreens? Yes. When was that? It was around September of 2015, maybe end of August, early September. Uh, wh why did Theranos make that decision? What well, was a complicated decision? Uh, we had uh, an audit from uh, by FDA staff uh, in August of 2015 and started and concluded in three weeks. And as part of the audit, we were having discussions. The FDA staff uh, looked at one of the two, we, we were using two different types of CTNs in the field at that time. One was lithium hebron, other, other one was EDTA. They're two different types. It, and it, it, lithium hebron, was there an abbreviation used internally? LIHAP. LIHAP. Yeah. And uh, that was the, uh, they were, they were different chemically, and then the design was different. Uh, and uh, FDA had asserted at that time in the audit that um, the lithium hebron CTN uh, was a class two device. During that audit, we reached out to FDA and said, you know, you have not um, told us to stop using these CTNs. 
if you want us to, we will be happy to do it. And they said, no, that's your decision. We cannot tell you that. You know, FDA sends you a warning letter usually when they want you to do something. I, I guess, were, were you part of those FDA discussions? In Correct. 2015, I was involved with those discussions. And yes. Did you receive that communication from the FDA? That, that saying that, that, that they weren't? Uh, that I was on that call along with Elizabeth Holmes and our general counsel with, uh, from FDA side, who's the head of OVI, OIV, I think. Or, wrong acronym, maybe. Uh, do you remember when that call took place? Yeah, it was end of August while the audit was ongoing and we had called and said we don't understand the audit was supposed to be you know we don't understand what's the purpose of the audit just tell us what you what you uh, want us to provide so we can provide them because audit was slightly unusual then instead of the inspector from the field there were two people from the DC office also and they were kind of going back and forth between the field inspector and the DC guys where to focus on so we just called them. we had a really good relationship with the FDA and the DC guy office and we said, if you want, if it's, if you have issues with CTN, please tell us. Uh, we have always worked with you, and we will do whatever FDA tells us to do. Uh, and we will make any short-term decision we have to do. Uh, and uh, uh, and we we had submitted CTNs to FDA for clearance earlier on in 2014. And December of 2014, I had a call with Elizabeth Holmes that. I, I guess, were you on this call with No, I was not. Okay, so I... I, I, I oh, sorry. Uh, well, yep. we, we can talk about the FDA in a little bit more detail. Sure. I guess my, my question was just sort of, you know, wh when, <coughs> when did Theranos stop using the, yep. the, the, the CTN at, at Walgreens and why? That's what the answer. So when we talked to FDA, uh, he said, uh, um, that's your decision. And at that point, we said, look, we ha already have a lot of data. We are close to submission. Uh, and our, uh, we as a team and a few members from the board said, uh, you know, let's just stop using CTNs, submit all the data, even for the CTNs that are not class 2 devices, which is what you don't have to submit to FDA, and then get all of them cleared, uh, and then we start using them. So we made the decision to stop using CTNs at that time. Uh, who on the board did you have that discussion with? I think our uh, general counsel uh, and... Uh, okay, wait, he was, was he on the board at that time? Yes. The, the, um, did you communicate the decision to stop using the CTN to Walgreens? No, I didn't. Did anyone from Theranos? No. Well, was that an internal company decision not to communicate that to Walgreens? Yes. Well, wh wh why did you reach that decision? Uh, first of all, in two th this is again September of 2015. We were in the uh, landlord leasey model. We were already executing that in the field. Uh, I had stopped providing them to the best of my knowledge. Uh, the finger stick percentage percentages, we stopped even discussing that for most part. And uh, I didn't think there was a need for them to know. We were the lab. We were taking all the right decisions uh, for, our, for our business. If you turn to the page ending in 6476, So this is, this is a chain dated uh, October 20, uh, 16, 2015. Do you see that? Yes. And, and you, will you understand that to be after the time that Wall Street Journal started uh, reporting negatively about Theranos? Yes. Um, and if you, if you just read kind of the, the chain starting at um, OK, WAG freaking out, lack of transparency, and if you could read just kind of through the rest of the page and then uh, let me know when you've had a chance to review it. Mm -hmm. See, did you see this uh, suggestion from Ms. Holmes there? Then let's show them that this is literally, st you understand this discussion to be Walgreens freaking out about yes. not knowing about the discontinuation of CTN use. Yes. Um, how did you know that Walgreens was freaking out? I think I had a call with the, or somebody from Walgreens that they said, we read about this thing and you should have told us. And uh, I said, you know, I don't think uh, we had to, but I think I had a brief conversation with them. I guess just to talk about your relationship with Neem for a second, I mean, would you call him a friend as well as a colleague? 
Uh, no. I mean, I would say colleague. I mean, he applied for a job and uh, at Theranos, so I wouldn't, uh, if, I were, if I was a friend, I would have probably talked to him more about it, but I, I wouldn't call him a friend. I guess, did you, did you communicate on friendly terms generally? I was on friendly terms with a lot of people at work, but right. I wouldn't say he was my friend. Okay, I, I guess, I mean, um, it, it, did he generally give you the impression that he was trying to support the Theranos relationship at Walgreens? I wouldn't say that. I think he generally gave me the impression that he wanted this project to succeed for Walgreens. I, what's the distinction in your mind? I mean, supporting, uh, doing a favorable impression of Theranos means that he was trying to present us in, a, in a, some kind of light, and I don't believe that was the case. Yeah. Okay. But uh, he, he wanted the he, he wanted Walgreens to have a successful rollout of Theranos services. Yes, that would be my impression. Okay. <coughs> um, and, and so it'd be, it'd be natural for him to be concerned with by the Wall Street Journal reporting. Is that, yeah. is that fair? Yes. Um, and is Ms. Holmes suggesting here, uh, well, I guess what is Ms. Holmes suggesting here? That Which line are you looking at? I'm looking at the line that says, at 1931 and 12 seconds, uh, then let's show them that this was literally, that this literally is still up in air, so we literally just decided, since the discussions, this discussion is getting aired out in press, you say, okay. Uh, you say, however, issue is we didn't tell them in advance about switching. Um, and then she says, we'll have to present uh, well that we hadn't decided to. Right. And you say, bad idea. At this point, they know, so need to be transparent. What did you understand Ms. Holmes to be suggesting here? I have to read this carefully to put it in context. I don't, at this point, I don't know what she means by this discussion, since the discussion is getting aired out in the air, or sorry, we literally just decided. So I don't know what she means by that, but if I were to guess, um, in my previous comment, I said I actually even thought about it, but I got too busy to chat. So again, it was in, uh, it were important I would have called them, but it was more an FYI that, hey, by the way, we are going to do that. But I didn't execute on that. Like I said here, I got I busy with that. And I actually don't remember what she meant, means by that. Hey, what, what are you saying is a bad idea? <clears throat> That's what I'm trying to remember here. Yeah, I don't recall exactly what the context was there. I mean, generally, do you recall what, 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 what suggestion she's making do you think is a bad idea? I wouldn't be able to guess by looking at just these three lines. Okay. I'm, I, I'm asking you to look at these three lines in the context of you know, your extensive experience with Theranos. Do you, do, you, do you have an understanding based on that experience and, and reviewing this document, what, what she's suggesting here? I don't. I don't. Because we were having a lot of discussions, so I don't know which is the specific point that she was referring to. This seems to me like she's saying that we should just tell them that we just decided to stop using the nanotainer. Do you not share that view? No, we, because Walgreens would know when we stop using the entertainers because, like I said, they had access to the raw data. They were seeing patients. They were checking in the patients. Every time a patient walked in, they always go into the Walgreens technician who was using the app to check them in. So Walgreens technician, if, if uh, uh, Walgreens would absolutely have access to data on when the, the CTNs are stopped, use, stopped used, using it. Okay, then why are you saying that you got busy and so you never told them? If they already knew, why would there be a need to tell them? Just as a courtesy. I guess, would there be any reason for Walgreens to freak out about a lack of courtesy at this time? You know, Walgreens uh, was worried about the, uh, the media. Uh, in the negative article, so people were asking them uh, questions that they could answer, uh, couldn't answer, and that was the key issue here: is that you should have told us what you were doing because when people ask us and we can't answer, we look like fools. So that was the point, the reason why they were unhappy. I want to turn to Theranos's relationship with Safeway. Can I put this over. You can put that. Uh, we, well, yeah, why don't we? There's a rubber band. I'll just put it, yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. 
I, I, at some point in time, did you become aware that um, Safeway was considering writing down as investment in Theranos? Mm -hmm. I, I don't recall that. Previously marked as Exhibit 126. Okay. Uh, do you recognize Exhibit 126? I do. What is it? It's an email exchange between myself and Safeway. And w was he your primary contact at Safeway for um, for, for Safeway issues? Yes. Um, and you know, we talked a little bit yesterday about Ms. Holmes' relationship with, um, is that right? It was the person you, you dealt with more after that? Yes. Um, I want to uh, turn to the third paragraph of your email, um, dated February 18th, 2014. You say, I would also like to emphasize that if Safeway or SWY chooses yes. to write off the note as communicated to your CFO, there must not be a mention of Theranos. Do you see that? I do. Does that refresh your recollection about a uh, discussion with Safeway about writing down their note? It does. Uh, w what do you recall about those discussions? I had a meeting with uh, Safeway, I think, a week before this uh, email or around this time frame. Uh, the other person mentioned here, he cc'd here in the email from Safeway at that time. <clears throat> they had invited me to meet with them in their headquarter in Pleasanton, and they had said, uh, uh, you know, we have not, um, uh, we have a need for, an, we have, there's an audit happening at Safeway, and we need to be able to show that this $30 million that we gave to Theranos, uh, you still have it, and you have the ability to repay it. And if you don't do that, then we will have to write it off. And that's, we don't want to do that. Uh, it's going to be negative for us, and uh, and we will have to also say we are writing out because of Theranos, and it'll be negative for, for you. And I said, no, you cannot do that. If you choose to do that, uh, you cannot mention our name uh, and uh, put some negative uh, attention on us. So that's that was the discussion. I, in early 2014, I guess did did Theranos have the ability to repay the 30 million dollars to Safeway? Uh, I believe so. Yes. With what funds? Um, I think we had, uh, um, I don't, mem don't remember exactly how much cash we had, but I think we had funds uh, 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 available at that time. We had 29 or $30 million cash already. We had raised some capital uh, in December or January of 2014. Actually, PFM had invested as part of that. And uh, we had the uh, uh, payment from Walgreens. The, the um Why was it important to you that there not be any publicity around Safeway's decision to, uh, if, if they had decided to write down the note, that why Theranos could be mentioned? Because we had not announced anybody that we had a contract with Safeway. It was not known in the public yet. And any contract that we were going to announce, with any announcement we were going to make with Safeway, we wanted it to be a positive announcement. This was also one of the reasons why we were going back and forth with Safeway around where the pilot's going to be, at which location, because we didn't want any negative spin about on why Safeway uh, canceled this note. So, so I guess p putting us in the context of the Safeway relationship at, at, at this time frame, did, did you understand that Safeway required a pilot uh, before it would roll out to additional Safeway stores in early 2014? Uh, not, no, not necessarily. Uh, even though it was in the contract, our last discussions with uh, which uh, were pretty clear is that he's, he wanted to move on to the national rollout. And that was the point we were making with Safeway several times, that we are past pilot and uh, uh, we are moving on to national rollout. And as a matter of fact, there was milestone payment for which we sent the invoice to Safeway because we had an in email interchange with and I remember that. Uh, Elizabeth Holmes had sent that email to that. You had already kind of announced to, to everybody that you are launching a new service in your stores and that's us, and we are going to do a national launch, and said, yes, we are going all the way. Okay, but after it left, did, did other people at Safeway agree with that? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. Uh, why not? 
while uh, other people at Safeway uh, were trying to forget a lot of things that we had agreed with uh, while he was in the room, and they wanted to go back to the contract, and we were pointing out to him that a lot of things that we had agreed on the contract, as we had agreed on immediately after we signed the contract, will need to be modified. And we pointed out to him that, for example, the first payment they had made to us uh, of $25 million was already uh, uh, something that uh, was uh, reflected that the contract had changed, the con terms of contract had changed. At, at any point in 2014, did anyone from Safeway communicate plans to open over 100 Safeway locations uh, for Theranos in 2015? Uh, not explicitly, but throughout 2014, several times I was negotiating with, uh, about uh, you know, launching our service, we were going negotiating the contract, we were going back and forth, but no, no I don't recall explicitly if anybody did. Uh, in 2014, did you have any expectation that Theranos would open more than 100 Safeway locations in early 2015? I don't recall. I'll have to see the model to see what I had, was modeling with. Uh, I guess any assumptions you had would be reflected in the model? Yes, I would say so. In 2014, were the, com were the two companies discussing uh, the use of a rental model at Safeway stores? Um, I believe so. I, for I forget the time frame, but I think it was 2014. W what would the what would that rental model meant for um, for th uh, for Theranos? Uh, it meant we could uh, uh, take over the Safeway location. The, the st they had built out about 900 plus stores for us. They sold out actually close to 1,000. They spun off some Safeway stores, so I think the final number was about 800 or 850 uh, by this time because they were getting rid of stores as part of their merger with Albertson. Uh, so what that meant was we would be able to uh, rent or lease the space that was built out for us at Safeway stores and, and use it and provide our services anywhere we wanted to and pay them rent, obviously, in, in exchange. And what were the terms of, those, uh, of that rent, do you recall? We were negotiating. I mean, uh, we were going back and forth uh, on what the terms would be. In 2014, did anyone at Theranos threaten to terminate uh, the contract with Safeway? I had a good relationship, so we used to uh, kind of play that button uh, on each other sometimes uh, and say, look, if you don't want to work, we should terminate. And we both knew we were not going to terminate because they had made a big investment in this. We had made a good investment in this. So we were not planning on terminating, but as part of the negotiations, we used to uh, put pressure on each other. I, did uh, uh, did you tell the board that you, you were considering terminating the relationship with Safeway? No, we had a discussion with the board that Safeway is not going as fast as we wanted to. There were a few members on the board who knew members on the board at Safeway was one of them, and he said, "I can call somebody and get that moving faster." And we said, "Yeah, please do." And uh, so we were trying to triangulate that problem from different angles, but our intent was we are working with Safeway uh, as best as we can. I guess, did, did you communicate that you had this sort of relationship where you could, you know, play the termination card, so to speak? Yes. Yeah. We knew that Safeway guys are extremely tough negotiators, very tough. And um, uh, he actually, I think, testified in his testimony. What, what testimony are you referring to? Uh, he and the. Uh, the did you review? Were you there for his? No, I heard that headline. Okay, I, again, I, I'm, um, I'm not going to inquire about what you know yeah, what was communicated you. through counsel. The um, did you? I guess did you speak? No. Um, separate and aside from the pilot, I guess specifically, was Safeway still looking for some sort of proof of concept from Theranos in 2014? There were some people at Safeway, they had a new ownership, like Walgreens, unfortunately, who um, you know, wanted to review and what this technology was going to be and what is Theranos. They didn't know about us. And we didn't want to reopen the entire thing, an entire dialogue with them again, uh, at least with new parties. We wanted to focus on people who had the background, because we were not going to engage another 12 months of contract negotiation with a new um, group. So. Uh, The, did, I guess, did, did Theranos pro propose any solutions to sort of complete that proof of concept or? Yeah, we said, uh, if you really want to do proof of concept as a gesture of goodwill, we can pick a place remote 
uh, and do a proof of concept there. We actually signed a contract in Wyoming, uh, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Wyoming, in anticipation that we will do a pilot if we need to be in Wyoming with Safeway. And they had 11 locations that would have been away from public eye. Quietly, we could have done a pilot. And if things didn't work out, if they wanted to cancel at that point, fine. Uh, but they wanted to do a pilot in Bay Area, right here uh, in San Francisco. And, and we said, no, if you, to us, this is what we talked about, that this is national launch. This is what we were preparing for. Uh, so no, we're not doing a small pilot in California. That was a disagreement. And in your mind, when you were thinking about the national launch with Safeway, uh, were, you, were you thinking about using that mix of TSPU, commercially modified, uh, modified commercially available analyzers, and unmodified analyzers? At Safeway, the, the services we would provide it? Uh, the, the, the blood collected at Safeway would be tested on sort of those three categories of machines? It'll be a central lab mo centralized lab model, which is why Safeway recognized that and gave us the first payment when we got our CLIA license. So yes, it was going to be, uh, now with the rental model, we could have done anything. We could have chosen not to offer finger sticks if we didn't want to, because they were landlocked. And they're doing that with Quest Diagnostics in some stores today. So the rent model, we owned everything. Did you ever communicate to Safeway that you, that Theranos was um, using commercially available technology in its in its central labs? Yes, when? we had 2010, 2011, when we opened our CLIA lab, all we were doing was vein puncture, and we told them we run them on FDA clear devices, uh, 2010 and 2011. And as a matter of fact, I think some of our reports may had even included the name of some of our devices initially. I guess when discussing the the national rollout and the uh, the, the or the Wyoming pilot, was was there ever any discussion of using commercially available machines? Yes, yeah. we, we communicate like I said explicitly that we are using those machines now, and we will continue to use them for any vena puncture or anything we wanted to use. As, so we, we mentioned earlier that generally Theranos didn't disclose what machines it was using because it was a trade secret, right? No, no, no. It, what was trade secret was the modified machines, how we had modified commercially available machines and made them do things that people thought was impossible. That was a trade secret. To Walgreens, what I had said was, we didn't Walgreens to even find out which vendors we do business with, because Walgreens will write down those notes and they will go to them at some point if they want to build the lab. So from Walgreens, we kept that as a trade secret. Also from other people we wouldn't that we didn't trust, we kept that as a trade secret. Uh, Steve Bird was not one of them. Uh, we didn't worry that under Walgreens is going to violate his uh, confidentiality. So, mm -hmm. sorry, Safer, yeah, sorry, thank you. So, yeah, Mr. S knew that we were using commercial analyzers. Now, I don't think he ever dug into, like, what machines, which vendor, tell me the names, you know. That was not his interest. Uh, I, I guess I'm trying to just understand that. So, it, it's because you had more <laughs> trust that you felt um, more capable of disclosing more of the technology? No, not technology. Just about, you were asking me, did they know we were using commercial machines that we were using? The answer to that is yes. Uh, we were using them and we will continue to use them. I, I guess, what, 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 what about character, or moral character, uh, in, in your mind, uh, made it okay to, to explain that to him? Well, he was, uh, in our, my observation was, he was not trying to copy what we were doing. He was trying to lock us down for even 10, 20 years. The contracts that he was proposing was, you know, mutually beneficial 20-year contracts. Did, did other people share, at Theranos share that view of trusting Safeway a little more than, than, than Walgreens? Trust more uh, than Walgreens, yes. Who, who shared that view with you? Mr. Holmes, uh, Ms. Holmes, I'm sure. Uh, and do, what's your basis for that understanding? Just our interactions. With I guess, can you recall a conversation with Ms. Holmes where she sort of expressed that sentiment, sentiment to you? No, I mean, no, nothing specific. It was more of, you know, the impression we had on that he's somebody that he's not going to violate our confidentiality. Did she ever disclose to Safeway that um, you were modifying commercially available machines at, at Walgreens? No, we would never do that. Not at Walgreens, in our lab. We were in not, your lab, yeah, but for yeah. the Walgreens rollout? No. For the same reasons, that was a trade secret. We would not do that, and we didn't share that with also for the same reason. Okay, so, what was the status of the Theranos Safeway relationship at, in late 2014? I don't recall exactly, but like I said, 2014 and even parts of 2014, we were going back and forth and negotiating uh, the terms of the lease agreement, and. I think we were stuck on a couple of point, key points or two or three key points that we were negotiating back and forth. Okay. 
were there any discussions in late 2014 about rolling out Theranos services and, and Safeway stores about actually doing the work to roll out in stores? Um, you know, the, the work we had to do at Safeway was not different from Walgreens' work. It was identical workflow, same apps, same software. Safeway actually was easier because they had connectivity they were going to provide us. They were actually, the IT was better. Uh, so there was nothing unique to Safeway that we had to do. Uh, pro obviously print new lab order forms so people know to go to Safeway versus Walgreens, but there was nothing, nothing very different from Safeway that we had to do. Okay, so my question was, were there any discussions with Safeway in late 2014 about actually rolling out, printing out the lab order forms, getting the rooms ready to open in Safeway stores? So the lab order form, no. The rooms were basically ready because they were designed for the national launch. So there was nothing again in the rooms that we had to change. Literally even the TVs that we talked about, the bamboo trees were already there. We had to pick them. Safe had paid for them. Even the chairs that we had wanted, the way we wanted, there were also pictures of entrepreneurs or inventors on the walls. The bathroom was built. Uh, uh, the bathrooms were clean. We designed them. Everything was done. There was nothing that we needed to do in the Safe location. We just needed to move in. Uh, it was a, all the locations were ready to move in. Uh, so were there any discussions for Theranos to move into those stores in we were, 2014? No, we were negotiating contract and as soon as the, le the terms of the lease agreed upon, were agreed upon, we would have started. Can we take a break and go off the record at 10.09 a.m.? Off the record. Back on the record at 10:22 a.m., Mr. Balwani, just to confirm, you didn't have any substantive discussions with the staff during the break. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, I'm going to hand you a document that's been previously marked as 119. Thanks. Do you recognize Exhibit 119? I do. What is it? It's an email conversation, uh, email from Safeway to Elizabeth on June 6, 2014, and then uh, to Elizabeth again and CCing two or three other people that I, I recognize, but I don't recognize the other two. Okay. You, it looks like he's asking for a follow a response to his email from, from June. Do you see that? I do. Do you know if the, if Theranos had had any discussions between with Safeway from that June to August time period? I don't recall, but like I said, in 2014, we were talking to them on and off, so I don't remember which month we started when it stopped. N nothing by specifically by month. Okay, and, and, and the, it lo again, it looks like from his email that, um, the, from the original June email, um, it so sort of discusses that point you addressed that uh, which is that they want to return to the contract as written. Is that is that a fair? Where are you reading? Uh, I'm sorry. So, um, if you look at the fourth paragraph of his message, where he says the third sentence, the contract speaks yes. for itself. It has not been amended or terminated. Yes. Is, is that sort of in line with what you described earlier that they want to re return to a contract that, I guess, in your mind had been updated by the conversation? Conversations and also by the actions that we had taken since then. And so what were those actions? Well, they had um, given us a $25 million payment when we had signed up as a centralized lab. The contract, as written originally, was similar to what we had anticipated we would do at Walgreens Phase 1. And it, it calls out for us putting our TSPUs on site, uh, and providing cartridges and so on and so forth. Uh, but immediately after signing the contract, actually sent me an email or a message. I recall him saying, okay, now the contract is signed, let's start negotiating. There's much left here that we need to uh, hash out and discuss more details. And I think around 2011 or 2012 was a time frame where uh, we became, 2011 is when we got the CLIA lab license actually. And uh, by then, we had already sp uh, spent more than enough time that centralized lab model is better. It's a better model to scale around. And uh, that's why they gave us the $25 million payment, because the contract 
uh, uh, asks for completely different milestones uh, for uh, us to be have earned the 25 million payment. Uh, at any point in 2015, did, did sorry, let me rephrase that. The uh, you, you know this message still refers to to a discussion of a pilot. Do you see that the I second do. paragraph? Yes. Did, at, at any point in 2014, did, did Safeway express to you that it's willing to forego the pilot? Uh, yes, it, in 2014. 2013, sorry. No, yeah, so yeah. In, in 2014, did no, anyone, I don't recall. No, uh, so I'm just gonna let me sorry. get my question out. Yeah. Well, just for the record, in, in 2014, did anyone from Safeway express to you their willingness to forego the pilot? Uh, no. Uh, however, in 2014, we were also negotiating the contract, so the pilot would have become obsolete had we signed the lease model. So the two things going were going in parallel. And when did did, did Safeway and Theranos sign a, an amended agreement? No, we did not. Okay. Uh, at some point, did Safeway, uh, Theranos terminate its relationship with Safeway? Not while I was in the company. I think it happened after I left. Okay. If if it happened, you have no firsthand knowledge of the termination. Is that fair? That's fair. Do you recall having any discussions with Safeway after this August 1st, 2014 email? I don't recall, but like I said, in 2014, I was engaged in a dialogue with, and uh, many times we spent long times on the phone, in person, so I was engaged with them, but I don't recall which month. I, I want to turn, you, you, you can put that document aside, thank you. I want to turn to um, Theranos' relationships with the Department of Defense. We, we, we talked about that a little bit yesterday, and <laughs> it, is it fair to say that, um, you, I, I think your testimony was that you weren't the closest person at Theranos to, to those relationships, is that right? That's correct. I, I think, I would say actually I barely spend any time on those. D did you have some understanding of how much money Theranos received from the Department of Defense? If it happened before I joined, then the answer is no. I, I didn't necessarily look at how, where the money came from prior, prior to I joined. But after I joined, I don't think it was a significant amount. Uh, what do you mean by you don't think it was a significant <clears throat> amount? I don't know, maybe less than a million? But even that, I'm guessing. But anything more than a million, I would have known. Okay, so in, in your words, in, in your mind, you didn't think of the DOD as, a, as providing a significant amount of funds to Theranos after the time you joined the company? Significant amount of revenue to the company, correct. Do you, do you know if they provided funds to Theranos beyond what would be considered revenue? I, I would not know. I was, like I said, I was not involved with DOD uh, significantly. At, at any point in time, did you become aware that um, the that um, the DOD w was reluctant to uh, test Theranos' device absent FDA approval? So I think that's a very broad statement. The question is who at uh, uh, DOD, because they are obviously a huge uh, department. Uh, I recall one meeting that I had uh, I, was, I had attended with one uh, uh, guy from uh, one unit from, uh, I think, Fort Dietrich, or actually maybe I, I'm even getting that one wrong. I don't remember where he came from, but he was a lab director uh, from uh, DOD, or one of the DOD departments, and he had visited us and he had made that comment. Did, did, uh, do you recall the ballpark when that was? I don't recall. G even generally by year? <clears throat> I would guess maybe 2012 or 2013-ish. Did you ever represent to any investors that Theranos had placed a TSPU on an Apache helicopter? <laughs> no. Did you ever represent any investors or potential investors that Theranos had placed a TSPU on the battlefield in Afghanistan? No. Would, 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 either, of those, would either of those have been true statements? To the best of my knowledge, uh, I mean, we shipped some units to some units in the military. Uh, I think they went to Africa. If any of them happened to go to Afghanistan, I wouldn't know. But I know I know that one or a few units went to Africa. But to the best of my knowledge, I don't recall Afghanistan. Is it, so <coughs> it, it just to answer my question, the best of your knowledge, that wouldn't have been a true statement? To the best of my knowledge, that would not be true. Do you ever recall representing to investors or potential investors that Theranos had placed the TSPU on a medevac helicopter? No. It, I, to the best of my knowledge, neither I or nobody I heard say that. And had Theranos um, deployed a device on a medevac helicopter by 2014? 
I, if it happened, I wouldn't know. Uh, I, I didn't know. Did you ever hear Ms. Holmes discuss the possibility of using the Theranos device on a medevac helicopter? Yes, we used to talk about different um, applications of TSPUs over the, over the future. So including, uh, we used to ass assess uh, what modifications we'll have to make to put a TSPU in a place like Afghanistan in Africa where there's no connectivity. From the software side, I was involved in how would we use a cellular uh, connectivity instead of Wi-Fi or Bluetooth in conditions like this. And we did spend a lot of time thinking about the modifications. Uh, we actually also had done a demonstration for NASA, and we had actually spent little time thinking about how we would put something like this in space, because over the laws of gravity don't work. So uh, we had spent some time uh, on those two. So we did have internal discussions and with uh, other visitors who used to say, is it possible to do something like this? And we used to uh, talk about a lot of different possibilities for the military. Uh, did you recall any investors, uh, or potential investors that talked specifically about the, um, the potential military applications? I don't recall any specific uh, investor. I mean, we didn't used to talk too much about the DOD work with investors because we were not doing much. And at least for the foreseeable future, we didn't have any plans for that. It was not even part of the model. So we didn't spend much time on that. So it's fair to say in your mind that towards the end of 2014, uh, work for the DOD was not something that was part of the business model in the foreseeable future? It was not a significant part. If we were going to continue doing some projects for DOD, which I think we were doing at least one or two projects. But I was, like I said, I was not involved with those. Uh, it would have not been a significant part of the business, which is why I was not modeling it in the, mon in the model. Did, I guess, did you have concerns with Theranos spending you know, its limited resources on the project with the DOD? I mean, every project is a, is a concern for me. Uh, anytime uh, somebody says I'm working on some project and, and you have 80 plus PhDs and hundreds of smart people, people love projects. And I used to go around killing projects and telling people to focus on what we had in front of us. So any project was a concern for me, but DOD, I would say, I think the work we were doing was one of those missions for the company that we do want it, wanted to, if we had more resources, we would have spent more time and resources, even if there was no income. Uh, but we didn't want to not do that. And why was Theranos pursuing a relationship with the DOD? But well, we had made a decision that, first of all, we had unique applications of what we could have done for the soldiers in the field. And there were a lot of applications that we had envisioned that when we put TSPUs in a battlefield, a lot of our soldiers die uh, you know, in the first hour or two hours of the, uh, of the uh, uh, time when they get wounded in the field. And there's no way to do blood test. We were told that soldiers were actually taking blood and putting them on a screwdriver and spinning it manually, centrifuge them in the field. There's no power, uh, there's no connectivity. So we wanted to do something for that. We, uh, it was part of our mission that uh, we would contribute towards uh, the work that the military is doing. Uh, we, were, we were very passionate about that. And we had also made a commitment, like we did with the Medicare and Medicaid, that we will charge the lowest price uh, to, met to, the, to the government, to the taxpayers. And our mission was, uh, and we used to talk about this internally. We may have even mentioned that to uh, a couple of investors. I don't recall that. When we do the work for military, most likely it's going to be a nonprofit. We are not going to try to make money off of that. We will cover our cost, of course. The but, but we hadn't gotten that far. It was just a discussion. You mentioned the centrifuge point. Did, did any of the TSPU uh, 4X models have an internal centrifuge? All of them. Okay. And what about the 3 Series? I think a prototype of 3 Series had a centrifuge also, yes. So none of the, none of the uh, TSPUs that None of the Theranos, sorry, let me rephrase that. None of the TSPUs used for commercial testing uh, had centrifuge capability, is that correct? It was not required in those use cases, correct. But we could have put a centrifuge if there was a use case. Like I said, we had a prototype, but none of the commercial ones currently were using centrifuges in the device. Your answer is, the question is correct. Did you tell uh, Dignity Health or anyone at Dignity Health at the time that they were considering to invest in Theranos that 75% of Theranos' revenues came from the DOD? No, we would not do that. And what, um, bes besides deploying Theranos' devices to Africa, are you aware of any other deployments of Theranos uh, TSPUs to any other part of the military? Like I said, I was not 
engage with the military. Uh, they were always, you know, interest, and some devices would go to the military for them to run it themselves, which is why when we sent this to Africa, I recall, uh, the reason I remember that is I think we got a letter from the team that evaluated that device who recommended to the uh, some authority in DOD that of all the promising technology they had, they had seen, Theranos was number one on their list. And uh, so this is why I remember it. But there were other projects like this that could have been ongoing. I spent close to zero time on that. Okay, so you don't know of any others? Uh, there was one that we were doing for long term. It was a long term clinical trial that we were doing for burn patients. Whenever soldiers get burned, uh, there are certain markers that we could have identified faster. And I think we had developed all those assays and we had provided that uh, bunch of devices to the uh, burn unit. I think it was for Dritic, but there was some burn unit that was doing research for burn soldiers. And again, we were doing that at below cost or cost uh, is my recollection. Because like I said, it was part of the mission. We were not going to make money from military. Do you know how much Theranos made from the burn study? I don't recall. I don't know. It was a long project, so I was started before I joined the company. OK, so besides the burn patients and um, the units that went to Africa, are you aware of any other Theranos TSPs that were deployed by the DOD? I mean, nothing comes to my mind. It is possible, like I said, things are uh, happening. And if I see a document, it may refresh my memory, but nothing specifically comes to mind. I want to turn to Theranos' uh, relationships with pharmaceutical companies. I think you mentioned yesterday most of Theranos' work for pharmaceutical companies took place um, before you joined the company. Is that is that right? That's correct. Um, do you know how much m money Theranos earned from that work? I don't recall uh, because, like I said, I didn't pay attention to the revenue prior to 2009 when I joined. I knew there was one contract we had with Celgene. I think it was for three or five million dollars. Uh, again, I didn't spend much time on that. It was a long time ago in 2009, so I don't remember the particulars. I, and uh, I guess in, in the 2013 time period, was there enough <coughs> doing any work for, for pharmaceutical companies? Not that I recall. How about 2014? Not yet. Not written, no. And in 2014, was there as planning on doing any work for pharmaceutical companies? Yes, we had plans for that. What plans? Um, we had long discussions with Walgreens about doing clinical trials uh, at our PSCs, our locations. And that was part of our um, project plan. And uh, in 2010 contract, and I believe in 2012 contract, uh, we had called out us working together to do clinical trials. And my understanding was that Walgreens actually and few other individuals had told us that they actually had built a team at Walgreens that was calling on pharmaceutical companies and starting, starting to build a business. And, uh, uh, you know, as soon as we start, uh, we are ready, we could start on the clinical trials business. The second piece was we already had these relationships in place that uh, were, uh, the company had. And now that we had a much more potent solution, a more powerful platform, our plan was to re-engage with those customers that we basically had neglected, be neglected because of um, the work we were doing for Walgreens, because that was kind of an all or nothing uh, effort for the company. So just on that first point, the Walgreens team you mentioned uh, that was focused on pharmaceutical work, did th any of Theranos employees have any contact with that Walgreens team? Um, I believe. There were a couple of meetings that I had, with, and I forget other people, but he used to bring people from a lot of different teams to introduce me to them. And I met a couple of people from that team. I don't recall the names, but if I hear the names, I'll, I'll be able to tell. Uh, did he ever t describe which pharmaceutical companies he was targeting? He, he may have mentioned some names. Uh, I don't recall which ones. Um, uh, Walgreens actually used to make a point of talking their partnership with uh, Theranos as a key benefit to the pharmaceutical companies when they were negotiating and told me that. It was part of the package of working with Walgreens. And uh, same thing with hospitals. They were negotiating a lot of contracts with hospitals to be part of their ACO, um, accountable care organization uh, deals. And they always mentioned Theranos. And a lot of those people wanted to come visit us. And yesterday when I mentioned that not all my meetings were VIPs, some of them were just meeting people because Walgreens used to bring. Uh, that was part of that uh, 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 that effort, but they didn't they, they they didn't mention a couple of names to me. I just don't recall which ones. 
how would Theranos have to change its offering in a Walgreens store to, to account for a pharmaceutical trial? Well, there are multiple things we could have done. Uh, first of all, fundamentally, we didn't have to change anything because the clinical trial patients come, they usually off, uh, ask for a lot of this test that we were offering, plus some specialty and esoteric tests. Uh, those especially specialty and esoteric tests, many of them we could have brought on commercial analyzers and also uh, on finger stick as we needed. We had already done that in the past. That was kind of the pharmaceutical business we had, uh, or the projects we had. So we had a bunch of assays that were used for pharmaceuticals. Now, every clinical trial, my understanding, again, I'm speaking from my understanding, uh, uh, with pharmaceutical companies, when they're developing a new drug, requires a new marker, uh, a new assay for a new marker, because they're novel. You develop those assays, you use them for three, six, nine months, 12 months, and then most likely nobody uses them because they're specific to that drug from that pharmaceutical company. So, and we had expertise in that. We obviously knew how to develop those assays, especially the immunoassays, we were good at that. So, so was part of the strategy then that Theranos would, would develop the assays that these pharmaceutical companies would use? Over time, yes. Uh, did, did Theranos do any work to develop any assays for pharmaceutical companies in 2013? Uh, no, we hadn't started. And, and the same in 2014? Correct. Uh, the, the second point you made about um, Theranos had existing relationships with pharmaceutical companies. Uh, do you remember which companies those were? Um, I, I, there were a few meetings that I attended, so I remember those. There was a meeting that I attended with GSK, GlaxoSmithKline. Um, there was one meeting I attended, one or two, with Celgene. Um, I may have attended a couple of other meetings, but those are the ones I had attended personally. Uh, Sanofi Aventus, I had attended a couple of meetings uh, in Europe. I had gone to Europe to do those meetings. But I think I mentioned yesterday, in most of those meetings, or all of those meetings, I was fly on the wall because that was early on in my process at the Theranos, and I was just learning and you know, being there as an additional executive. So, but I don't remember the rest. I mean, the company had done work with others. I think we had a project with the, uh, um, did I mention Centacore? There's a project we had done with Centacore, uh, and that was a very positive project. They gave us a beautiful uh, letter showing how good our technology was. The um, so, so you mentioned those meetings with GSK, Celgene, and Sanofi. You think those were all sort of early on in your tenure at the company? That's correct. I think 2009 or 2010. Did you have any meetings with them in 2013 or 2014? I personally did not. Do you know if anyone at Theranos did? Not that I knew of. Did, were you aware of any meetings taking place between Theranos and any pharmaceutical companies in 2013 or 2014? Not that I was aware. I was part of. Uh, if Elizabeth or somebody else was doing that, again, just like DOD, I was not engaged with that part of the business, then I wouldn't necessarily remember or know. And so who was responsible for the pharmaceutical um, services business at Theranos? Well, I mean, it, it depending on depending on how you look at it. Uh, Initially, when we were engaged with pharmaceutical companies, it was a direct model where we were going to work with them on clinical trials. We used to put our TSPUs on the site, ship them cartridges. They used to run everything, or their doctors or their nurses, whoever. And uh, so that was one model. That happened before I joined the company. And I think, like I mentioned, there were a couple of projects that were ongoing. Uh, the other model that I was talking about, the clinical trials at Walgreens, I would have been responsible for that. But that, again, is not like a special service necessarily to pharmaceutical companies. It's more a joint clinical trial where Walgreens will be the location. Wal Walgreens wanted the pharmacist to play a bigger role. They thought pharmacists was a very underutilized resource they had, and they wanted to bring the pharmacists out. And they thought what we were providing in lab laboratory services and diagnostic services and uh, with the pharmacist was the killer combo. So. This, that, that was not much work that we had to do, I had to do, to be differentiated for pharmaceutical services. The contracts could have been signed by us, Walgreens and Pharma guys, or maybe just Walgreens and Pharma guys, and we would just provide services. Okay, so I understood your answer to be that you would have been responsible for any of the clinical trials work that you were discussing with Walgreens, but what about the other work that you might start up again with the pharmaceutical companies? Who would have been responsible for that? We probably would have hired some other person to lead that. Okay. Um, and then historically, who was responsible for the pharmaceutical well, company historically, relationships? Sorry. sorry. Who was responsible for the pharmaceutical company relationships? Yeah, like I said, historically, all the work was done before I joined the company. 
Uh, Elizabeth was the CEO of the company at that time, and I think there were 40 or 45 people. Uh, so she must have been involved, this would be my guess. And there were other people, uh, like I said, it was a small company. So I, my guess was point of contact with the technical people. And there were a few other people in those days, I don't remember the names, they were involved with the, with the work. Okay, but Elizabeth would have been overseeing the relationships. She would be part of that. We actually had another guy, um, I forgot his name, uh, he's a, he was a French guy. And we hired him from GSK because he was a VP who used to work for GSK. And when he saw our product, he saw, he, you know, he used it, he was the customer. And then after some time he said, I want to be part of what you guys are doing. And he was a VP level guy, so he came and he oversaw our relationship. But I forgot, it was early on, I forgot the guy's name. Okay. And he left Theranos sometime before 2013? Yes. I'm going to hand you what I'll mark as Exhibit 246. <clears throat> For the record, uh, 246 is a document date stamped TS 000496 through TS 000546. I'll represent to you that the company's uh, Theranos has provided this as the uh, as, as part of the materials that were provided. Okay. H have you seen Exhibit 246 before? Um, probably not as compiled here, but there's some content here that I may have seen. So I, 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 I understand that 246 uh, comprises a couple different a uh, couple different things. So uh, have you seen it? Like, why don't we start with the cover page? Have you seen anything from the cover page before? It just says exemplary pharmaceutical reports from exemplary reports from participants. I'm sorry, let me rephrase that and slow down. Uh, do you see the cover page that says exemplary reports from pharmaceutical partners? Uh, I do. Yeah, do you recognize this? No, I don't. Okay. The, the second page, uh, it looks like a document that has the Pfizer and Theranos logos. Yes, I do, do you see that. Do you recognize that document? I don't. If you turn to the page ending in 530, there's a document that has the sharing plow and Theranos logos. Do you see that? I do. Do you recognize that document? I don't. Turn. And, 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 th and those are the two in, the, in this one. Uh, you, you don't recognize either of these two documents? I don't. Did you, did you review them your, during your time at Theranos? Like I said, I may have seen bits and pieces of this uh, in other places, but I don't recall reviewing uh, the way it is here. And it looks like I missed one. If you, if you turn to TS524, there's a document with the uh, GSK and Theranos logos on it. Do you see that? I do. you recognize this document? I don't. Uh, did you have any understanding of, of who drafted the reports that appear in Exhibit 246? Um, I wouldn't be able to tell. If I, uh, actually I never saw, the, I, don't recall, I don't recall seeing them, so maybe I shouldn't even guess, but no, I don't. Did you ever hear anyone at Theranos describe uh, drafting these reports? Did you ever send reports um, that uh, are supposed to portray work that Theranos did with ph pharmaceutical partners to potential investors or investors of Theranos? Um, I, I wouldn't specifically recall uh, if this or something like this was sent to a investor or more than one investor, but it wouldn't surprise me because sometimes you will engage in a dialogue and somebody will say, oh, that's interesting send me more content or literature or so something to read and we will send them something uh, on that. So it wouldn't surprise me, but I don't recall me sending this at least. Uh, or if I did, somebody gave it to me and I just attached it and sent it out. Were there occasions when you would, you know, somebody would just give you documents and you would just attach it to an email and send it to uh, potential investors? 
I don't recall. I was just saying that if something like this that I don't remember and is not my expertise, if I did send to somebody, then it would be like that. But I don't recall me doing that. It's okay. possible. Yeah. I'm trying to understand what your practice Sorry. is usually. So if you were sending uh, materials to potential investors, would you, uh, in practice, review them prior to sending them out? No, not necessarily. If it is something that I didn't understand, uh, it's like me trying to focus on Chinese letters. You know, well, I recognize some of them. But uh, looking at har them harder doesn't help me. So if it's something I didn't recognize, I will just assume somebody will send it to me. There's a reason behind it, and I'll send it out. Do you recall instances in which you didn't review materials before sending them to investors or potential investors? I don't recall, but uh, you know, any email that I reviewed or not, if I look at something, maybe I'll refresh my memory, but I don't recall. But why wouldn't you review them prior to sending them out? Uh, the reason is um, almost every case, the investors we were dealing with, were we viewed them as strategic partners. So it was more of information exchange, not necessarily because of these two reports, this may change your investment, investment decision. It was you know, either somebody's curiosity uh, or somebody wanted to think about you know, you know, their business, how this Theranos is going to impact their business. So it was more of a strategic partnership dialogue rather than an investment dialogue. And at least the investment meetings that I attended, I would say many of the meetings, 90% of the discussion was around how the two companies could work together. Most of these guys that we met with in 014, 15 were either entrepreneurs or business leaders. So our discussions were more around the impact, how we work together, and as part of that, they would say, if somebody said, uh, send me that document, I would like to read that more, then we would just send it to them as an information exchange. So I didn't have to read all of that. Okay, so you thought that um the people that you were sending the materials to wouldn't be relying on the materials to make their investment decisions, so it wasn't, it wasn't worth it to just review it prior to sending it to them? I didn't think about that in that way. I was thinking literally like there's a business partner here on the other side, and they have asked me for information and be exchanging information. Uh, so that's kind of how I was thinking. Why wouldn't it be important, though, to send sort of accurate information out to them? Well, I, it, if, it was, if I knew it was inaccurate, of course I would not send it out to them. So my assumption was that uh, whoever the scientist or whoever compiled the information is making sure it's accurate. I mean, I, I had no reason to believe that there were people working around me who were dishonest and working on in your inaccurate stuff. So if somebody sent me something, I would absolutely assume it's accurate, correct, and I have a right to rely on it from within my team. I never, I don't recall any instance where I looked at something and I said, that's false. That's inaccurate. No, never send anything. That. I mean, I would have a different conversation with that individual. You, you can put Exhibit Two Forty Six to the side. Did uh, Theranos ever have a contract with CVS? We were negotiating a contract with CVS, but we didn't sign it. Uh, why not? We were working on it. We were in the last stages of signing a couple of. Uh, there were two points, or I think, remember one or two points that we were trying to nail down and negotiate, but we were pretty close to signing it. W when were you pretty close to signing a contract with CBS? I'm, I'm maybe getting the time frame right, but I would say end of 014 or 15 time frame is the partnership. Between, the dialogues between us was very strong. We had both strong interests to work together, and uh, so I would say like 14, 15 time frame. Did you ever represent any investors that, that uh, you had a contract with CVS? No. Uh, did you ever hear Elizabeth Holmes say that to any investors? No. Uh, we've talked about the financial model uh, a little bit. and uh, Did you ever include uh, a rollout in CVS as part of your financial model? Uh, in some cases, uh, I may have, you know, I had in, in different models, I used to have different names uh, based on, of, sometimes I would say Walgreens Cefe or I would say Walgreens, Safe slash CVS, slash dot, dot, dot. So in some models, I did use these names interchangeably that we will deploy with somebody at some point. We just don't know which partner yet. And then at some point, I just said other. Uh, because again, we didn't know what the cadence will be with which partner and how fast we'll deploy. So Walgreens was kind of in the public, and it was in the public domain, and we had a good idea what we were doing with them. But with others, I would just say other. And w w would you share that that sort of other category with p investors or potential investors? Well, it wasn't the model, so they will see it. Yes. 
Did you ever, when, when presenting the model to investors or potential investors, did you uh, ever represent that um, the model was based only on contracts signed and in place? Um, we had uh, that some projections in the model or some assumptions in the model that were based on the contracts that we had signed. So I think I had put a comment in there. I was in one of the meetings where somebody had said, looked at the balance sheet and said, it was one of the investors, I forgot which one. Uh, it may have been BDT, but I forgot again. Um, that uh, he, they were advising me on how to improve the model. And I said, you know, I don't know how to recognize the value of our soft assets. We have a ton of IP and patents. And also the fact that we have these contracts. And I look at co um, other companies, they always have some intangible line item there. So how does that work? And uh, and he said, well, you, we need to figure out how to value all these things. And I had a discussion with Border on that, too. But let's put a comment here that tells people that we do have these contracts so they know and they remember. So that's kind of where it came from. So I, I think I put a comment in a balance sheet section on the model somewhere. I, I guess my question is just more general. You know, when, when presenting the, the model revenue projections, did you ever explain that, this was, that the, the model revenue projections were based on contracts? It was based only on contracts that Theranos had in place. I think uh, it was a note uh, in the financial model. I don't think, again, I would say, uh, you, uh, you know, I don't think of this as, as a financial projection, but I would say financial, in the financial model, I did have a note that said these uh, numbers uh, assume that the only, only the contract signed. We don't have to sign new contracts in order to hit these numbers. What's the difference between a model and a projection? Well, I think we talked about that. I don't know what a projection are, but I know what a model is. And I shared that with you yesterday, that a financial model is where I'm still compiling a lot of information. I have all the assumptions right there. I'm using that as a financial tool. Uh, and you can just modify the numbers to see uh, uh, the impact of uh, you know, changes in assumptions, changes in rollout schedule, changes in whatever assumptions one wants to make to see what's the impact uh, on the business. So I was using this as a more, to, to me, a model is more like a planning tool um, ra rather than a financial statement, I would say. So you, you have no understanding of what a projection is? I think projection is a, is a, is a fairly clearly technically defined financial term, which is why I, I like don't using it. I don't like using it. Um, I used to ju usually just say financial model because to me that was more explicit that this is a model. You, you have an MBA. Correct. Yeah, that's what I get to. Uh, did you did you learn about financial modeling and uh, while you're getting your MBA? Um, I probably did. I, I don't recall. I did take classes in finance, but not my strongest uh, subject. In, in any of your coursework, did you gain an understanding of what a projection was for a company? I probably did, but like I said. Um, um, I don't remember what exactly it was, which is why I didn't want to use the term and use model instead. Do you, do you recall ever using the term projection when referring to the Excel spreadsheet that you're calling the model now? I may have, uh, when, uh, uh, when I was creating the model, either me or somebody may have put projections at the title uh, in one of the spreadsheet tabs, but the overall Excel spreadsheet, the content, I was referring to that as the model. So yes, the word projections may show up in the spreadsheets, but you know, I, I was not focusing on those. I was focusing on more on the assumptions and the numbers. Sure. My question was, did you ever call the model a set of projections? I don't think I ever did. And if I did, it was probably with somebody who already knew the purpose of what the model was. And I may have used it interchangeably once in a while. But in general, I would make, make sure that it's a, it's a model. Who is working with you on the financial model? Well, the model actually had a long history. Um, I created the first version of that uh, working with, I believe, Safeway first, and then Walgreens separately. And then as we started evaluating the business, because obviously in 2010, we didn't know much about the business, uh, the lab testing and, and other details. So uh, Safeway actually spent a lot of time educating us on the lab industry. And then so did Walgreens. When we had bo met both of the companies, they knew a lot about lab industry. They clearly was look, were looking at it. Uh, and Walgreens actually had told us during those early modeling exercises that they had spoken with dozens of companies. They had also partnered with LabCorp at one point. Uh, so they had been interested in this market. So they, they had a lot of data. So the early models came from my work with Walgreens and Safeway. 
around 2010, I started, uh, obviously in 2011, I started doing my own research to educate myself on the in industry. Some of the assumptions in the model, as you probably noticed, came from CDC's website, for example, how many EMR visits in the US and how many ICU beds. So I got that data from there. Uh, and, uh, and over time, it was raw data coming from the field as I learned you know, how, much direct, uh, how much dollars per requisition we are making from the field. So as I acquired, over time, I think it was more input from a lot of people. As the information came into me, I would uh, you know, update the model and keep it updated. Okay, so you mentioned that either um, maybe you or somebody else who was working on it would have put projections at the top. So I was just wondering who from Theranos was working on the model with you? Well, had provided me, um, a, she used to provide me balance sheet because balance sheet she just drew out from the QAD system. So there were some headers that she had provided me and I had copied and pasted those headers across all three or two other tabs at some point. Uh, and then, like I said, I had given that model to our consultants at BDT, and they made a bunch of changes to clean the model up, formatting. Uh, I had a lot of typos. I also had a lot of acronyms like Normandy and other things in the model. I remember one meeting I had a word called killer software engineers, and the board, some people in the board thought I really meant killer software, like in killer software. And killer software means really good software engineers. So I had to, these guys came and cleaned up a lot of the models, so they changed the headers and change other things in the model. Was there anyone else from Theranos who was working on the model while you were working on it? I don't think so. Did anyone? Like, sorry, nobody with direct access to the model. Uh, I don't think anybody else modified it. I want to turn to um, just your understanding of Theranos' interactions with the FDA. I, why don't we take a break right now? We'll go off the record at 11.03 a.m. Okay. Off the record, 